So this podcast is sort of like a testament to Vicky and I's passion for learning and growth. We are committed to our journey of learning and growth. We are going to come back in 2024, stronger, better. Hey there, welcome to Save by Nobel, the learning and growth podcast that takes lessons that we learn in very different places, whether that is class, talking to other people, reading books, and package it in a way that is conceivable to our majority African audience. If you have been listening to this show for quite some time, you will notice that Vic is not with me today. I'm your host, Edith Nyanja, and it sort of like shows the effort that we take to be able to bring the show to you. A little context, this will be our ninth show for the first season, which started mid-October. As I'm recording this, this is mid-December of 2023. And basically, what this show was meant to be able to do is, first of all, give me and Vicky our first podcast experience. You've seen that uh, LinkedIn post that talks about uh, you can never really get to your 100th podcast without setting your first. And this has been sort of like an experiment, uh, a way for us to be able to push each other uh, to be able to finally uh, do this. I've been trying to do a podcast for a couple of years now, working for that very, very perfect moment. And uh, I did a uh, bump or meet with Vicky this year. We also had a podcast, is mine, that's a passion project. The two of us met in uh, a leadership program uh, called the Senior Executive Program in Africa, uh, over by Harvard Business School. And we hit it off almost immediately. I could see in Vicky somebody who was very hardworking and very sociable, testament to her being a salesperson. And she, of course, is Kenyan. In a class of about 60, we're about uh, nine Kenyans. And, and we hope, of course, because of that and because of our interest uh, in learning and growth and because of also our interest in terms of developing a podcast, I thought that we would be great together in terms of finally pushing me uh, to be able to start that first show. It's very new to her. She uh, is not in journalism. She's a sales person. I studied media, but I've never really practiced for the last, you know, since I graduated in campus about 12 years ago. So it has been a tremendous eight episodes, and we are very happy that we get into our final ninth episode of the season. As I mentioned, uh, we'd have loved to have Vicky on the show, but this is a passion project as we do have day jobs. And uh, how that works is that there's a lot of travel that happens, especially for Vicky now that she is moving into a new role. And we are not in the same place 75% of the time. Uh, she's either out of the country or out of town or something is happening. And uh, it's actually a logistical nightmare to be able to come and give you a show to listen to every single week. But we've done it eight times. And so because of that, we brought in Wendy. Wendy Major manages this show, makes us come to one room. And we also have DJ Sanj, our producer, who's been very helpful in terms of turning my mostly shrill voice uh, into something that is, as Vic would say, palatable. It does its best. It does its magic. And, you know, we do the best what uh, we do have. So as we say, the show must go on. As I said, today's episode is about celebrating how far we have come, recording that particular first show, going all the way to eight shows, and finally summarizing this in the ninth show. And the second thing that I'd, I'd love to be able to do for you today is to be able to summarize what this season is about. So some ask, you know, season? Yes, season. Yes, the first eight episodes and this being the ninth episode uh, is meant to be the first season where we help you uh, set your goals for 2024. And given that I am recording this on the 14th of December of 2023, you probably have another 15, 16 days to the end of the year where uh, if you reflect on what we have learned so far, it's going to be very, very helpful for you to be able to uh, set your 2024 goals. And this shows a uh, Digital footprints for life. What that essentially means is that every single year you can always come back to it. Even in the middle of the year, you can always come back to it and use it as a very good reference tool as you set your goals. So yeah, let's get into it. This series, this season has always has been about goal setting. And the first two episodes that we did is we sort of like imagine uh, what is good practice in a corporate setting and sought to bring that to our own personal goal setting. And a good practice is having a governance structure and good corporates have 
a board of directors that is diversified. Sometimes, you know, you might start a business and you might have all the knowledge that takes that business to, you know, a place where it's a bit stable. But all good entrepreneurs get to a point where they have to have a board uh, either that governs or advises them. And so the idea behind a board is to be able to bring a diversified group of individuals to be able to tier you as the CEO as you go and deliver uh, on what the mission of the organization and uh, the purpose of the organization is. And so the first two episodes is about setting the right governance structure for you as a person, for your personal life, inspired by Anipini Mapunda's book, Take Charge, where we're talking about personal board of directors. In episode one, we covered family, friends, and peers. In episode two, we covered mentors, coaches, your line managers, and bosses. And collectively, when you think about all of these categories, they, in one way or the other, form people who influence your personal life, you know, as you go through it. And so, even before you get to goal setting, as you take the time to be able to reflect on what the year has been and what next year should ideally look like, think about your governance structure. Think about who will fit into my personal board of directors. What value do they add to me? And also, what value do I add to them? Uh, should I bring some people on board? Should I drop some people who are no longer relevant? Do they have value over and beyond what I'm able to bring uh, for myself? Of course, life is a journey that you have to take with other people. And so being intentional about all of this particular relationship is a good starting point. So personal board of directors with the categories family, friends, and peers, coaches and mentors, line managers and bosses is one thing that you actually want to think about and go back to episode one or two or grab me from this book as you think about who your personal board of directors are for this coming year. And then we went to Balas Kukat, which is one of the goal setting tools that I have personally used since 2010. This was taught to me by my mentor, Maurice Newa, when I was a little bit late teens. And I've actually used it to very great effect to be able to guide my life in a, in a balanced way. Uh, the reason I like the balance scorecard is from the name, it is balanced, which means that you're not only looking at one particular aspect of your life. And most people, you know, they set their goals for careers because actually they are forced to as part of their work or that's their hustle. They actually have to set targets that they actually go to. But life ideally should be like a wheel, which should be all round. And so the balance scorecard forces you to think about what other aspects are important to you. It could be finances, which... We went into great detail to differentiate that from career. It could be your relationships, whether that is your family, friends. Uh, we live in an African context. We live in a community. We are responsible uh, for our families, but for people beyond our families as well. Uh, we look at personal growth as possible categories uh, in, so in episodes three and four. And so if you're thinking about a tool that you can use, you can go on the internet, Google personal balance code, and you're going to see some detail uh, in terms of what categories you can actually think about. But our episodes three and four will give you a high-level framework, some suggestions of what you need to be able to put in these categories. Remember, goal setting does not have to be a 10-page document or an 80-page document like some uh, learned, very distinguished people in our society you know, do. It can be a one-page, and one page, the simpler, the better for you, especially if you're starting out. And so. If you do not have a tool that is actually working for you or if you want to actually get into actually writing your goals, then uh, I suggest listening to uh, episode three and four on the balance scorecard and get the framework for how you need to be able to set your goals. And then as we're going through the balance scorecard uh, episode, we did realize that there are some things that we might want to be able to put some more depth into, uh, some concepts that are a bit not clear uh, that deserve um, more attention, and therefore we built out episodes five to eight to be able to go one level or two levels deep uh, into those categories. One uh, uh, example is uh, under the personal growth category, we talked about having a reading culture in episode five. I know this is a very easy goal for a lot of people to set in terms of, you know what, I'm going to read more. And I used to set such goals. You know, I want to be able to read more. Of course, life happens. Uh, there was a time that I would read, read a lot when I had a lot of time in my hands uh, as a teenager. But, you know, of course, life happens when you start uh, your career, when you start your 
your your your family. And for me, it's actually been admitted me, uh, from that particular episode that I've not really had a chance to be able to read a lot of books, which is where a lot of us are. And so in this episode, I think we start on the premise that for you to be a leader, you have to read. Remember, leaders read and readers lead. I hope I got that right. Leaders read and readers lead. Vicky did mention, and she's an avid reader herself. I think she takes down a book or two in a month. Mentioned that on average, CEOs are known to be reading about 52 books in a year. Uh, of course, if you go to the internet, you know, there is always some debate about you know, whether that's the right statistic or not. But essentially, you have to be able to consume knowledge, internalize knowledge to be able to give it back in the form of uh, leadership. We all agree that reading is important. So we delve into some of the ways you can actually read. This is a very useful platform. So I, for example, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. That's how I consume a lot of my, get a lot of my knowledge. I listen to a lot of podcasts. That is where I get a lot of my contacts and then I go on and out and apply. And so we did realize that actually reading an audiobook can be counted as reading. And I do consume a lot of that. I, I, I subscribe to an app that actually does that. Vicky, on the other hand, loves the feel of the page when she turns it. And both of them are okay as long as you have some reading. So we go into those particular examples of how you can read and how you can get started, which is, you know, ideally getting a journal or topic that you're actually passionate about and then reading that because it becomes much easier to be able to start that way. And then episode six, we go into the taboo topic of personal finance. I use the word taboo because I don't know why society does not talk about personal finance. I don't know why we're not really taught about this in school. Yet, we in one way or the other as you go through life, come through challenges when it comes to personal finance, whether that is challenges in the form of things that we do or things that we do not do. And so here, I think I give context on my own personal experience. I am trained in finance. I do practice finance, but have made mistakes when it comes to personal finance. And I admit that, you know, I become vulnerable so that you are able to relate. And then we embark on this journey uh, together. So if you think about personal finance and you think about what can I do in terms of my goals, I feel like maybe there's one or two things I need to be able to work on or you are not really clear in terms of where to get started. Episode six is a very good episode for you to be able to go back to and you will realize how passionate I am uh, in that particular episode. So in episode seven, we talk about personal branding and I must admit that before I started preparing for this show, I did not know anything about personal branding. I did, I think for me, when I came to branding, I only thought that corporates are the ones who brand, you know, think about Coca-Cola, Paricom, MTN, whatever country you are in, Airtel, those are corporate brands. But I did realize from this particular episode that personal branding is something that you actually need to actually think about. You need to own your brand because you showcase a, a part of you to society. People know you for a certain thing and you cannot really leave your personal brand to be random. You know, it is something that you actually but need to intentionally manage. A lot of these companies invest a lot in personal branding, including having full staff and full teams that care about the brand. Why? Because having a brand itself adds value to a business. So think about if you are very intentional about managing your personal brand, how that is going to differentiate you uh, from everybody else who doesn't. As I said, I did not know about this stuff, but coincidentally, as I was going through this with Vicky, uh, a few weeks later, I met somebody who actually is an expert in personal branding. Uh, I wish to be able to connect with them and uh, bring them to the show so that we get to learn more about personal brand. But for me, I'm personally committed to having uh, personal branding as a category for personal growth uh, as we think about uh, my plans next year. And then in episode eight, we go into personal growth as a category. And here we also start with the premise of you know, in all of these goals, whether it's finances, career, etc., you're taking care of other people, but you're not really taking care of yourself. And so we go into the different topics that might form personal growth and personal mastery. And also in this particular case, similar to personal branding, where Vicky was actually letting me know about what she's done in that field, I give her a few suggestions on what uh, categories of personal growth that she can focus on. And so this would be a very good episode to actually go back to. In fact, if I was to give you a suggestion, I would go into personal growth so that you're able to like see the different categories. That's episode eight before you actually go to episode 
five, six, seven. Because five and seven in my mind are examples of personal growth categories. So now that you have a summary of what the season is and you have a sense of what you are trying to do, which is get you prepared for goal setting, then what do you do? I think for me, uh, what has really, really worked very well is to, first of all, make sure that you have pen and paper, whether literal or digital, which means you have a pen, have some time, you have some quiet around you uh, for reflection, and you're either writing down or typing down what you need to do. As I mentioned, I've been doing the personal balance book at, for, uh, since 2010. And this particular last 15 days of the year has been very, very important for me uh, to take the time to be able to reflect. Most of us are taking time off more than we actually do in other seasons. Uh, so use some of that time uh, to be able to reflect, spread it out in a day or two and use that some of that time to be able to quickly write down your goals. As I said uh, in our goal-setting session, when we started the Pastor Ballas Gokard episode, that if you write smart goals, you're already half of the way there, right? The other thing you could probably do is uh, have an accountability system, have an accountability partner around you. I recently looked at, I read a post about a former colleague of mine who set up an accountability system that has been going on for the last four or five years, and they literally meet sit down, ask each other questions, hold themselves to account. And I think we're going to bring her to the show maybe sometime next year, but this intentionality, this accountability structure and system, if you have that, it really goes a long way in terms of pushing you to be able to meet your goal. I use accountability as a hack myself. As I mentioned, I wanted to do this podcast for many years now. I've told everybody around me that I wanted to be able to do this podcast, I've been trying to get the perfect time to be able to do it. However, the moment I got Vicky to come into the show, then we went on a, sort of like a, a roller coaster where it was very scary to do the first episode. But now this is the ninth episode that I'm recording. Uh, we've been very consistent in bringing out these episodes. So if you can, have an accountability system around you and you know, use the time between now which is 15 days to the end of the year, the end of the quarter, the end of the period that you're actually thinking about, and to think about, reflect on, write down, have some accountability, write down smart goals. And remember, if you do that in this particular season, then know that about half of your goals have already been done. Now that you know about you know, what goal setting, our intention about goal setting, and how you actually use the last period of this year or this goal setting period, what, do, what should you look out for for this particular show in 2024? So this podcast is sort of like a testament to Vicky and I's passion for learning and growth. I am always measuring myself qualitatively or quantitatively about the moves that I actually make. I'm very intentional about my growth. Vicky is as well. As I mentioned, we met and made very heavy investment this year. Uh, that's why we met him in the uh, executive leadership course we did. It wasn't cheap, of course, but it was really, really worth it. And I see in both of us passion to continue to learn and grow. My personal view is that if I am able to force myself through an accountability system to you, uh, my listeners, that I need to be able to give you a show, then that forces me to actually go out and learn, adapt, and teach. Then that is actually reinforced in my mind. And I know Vicky also has the same sense. So what I'm trying to say essentially is that we are committed to our journey of learning and growth. We are going to come back in 2024, stronger, better. We have nine episodes in the last probably two months or so. Our commitment is to have at least 40 power-packed episodes uh, next year that add value to you. We hope to also get feedback from you about the shows that you like to be able to listen to when it comes to learning and growth. You find something out there that is very interesting, that you're really passionate about, telling our audience, let us know. We want to be able to learn from you as well. So we'll be bringing in guests who are experts in the topics so or we are passionate about the topics that we cover and who are actually practicing the principles that we're actually sharing through this podcast, covering different topics that we find passion about, whether that is you no know, sales speech, uh, we work productivity, work-life balance, finance, everything that you've actually covered in your balance code in one or the other is going to feature the topic and 
curated in a way that is helpful to you, our listeners. You're going to see a lot of more collaboration uh, with Kenyan and African broadcasters so that we're able to enhance our voice, we're able to really understand and cross pollinate. The idea behind a podcast, of, of course, is to make sure that, you know, we give you uh, that alternative place where you can actually come in and learn. So uh, expect a little more collaboration. I'm going to challenge Vicky. And of course, you know, uh, Wendy and, and, and DJ Sancho have been challenging us to produce video content. So that might need a little spruising the room, a little bit of perfection uh, as we record this content. But, you know, look out for, you know, some of those YouTube videos and, you know, reels, whatever you get your reels and whatever you know, all of those things are. I'm an accountant. I like to be private, but, you know, for you, uh, our listener, probably I'll get out of Michelle a bit. All to say, we are very grateful for the hundreds of subscribers across different platforms across different countries in this continent who have listened to our show. Uh, we have the stats for that. We are very grateful for people who have reached out personally and given us feedback on our show and who have encouraged us to be able to continue this journey. We hope to continue with your inspiration to produce content that's valuable to you. I also want to thank Vicky, my co-host, uh, for finally pushing me and making me uh, accountable to you, the audience, uh, in terms of getting these shows out. To our manager, Wendy, to our producer, DJ Sanj, uh, you make something beautiful out of something very average. And so we have you to thank. We look forward to you being saved by Nobel through 2024. Thank you so much and have a happy festive period ahead. I hope this episode has taught you uh, something new or at least reminded you of something that you once knew. Uh, we're always very excited if uh, you go out and apply it and let us know what the experience looks like. Uh, you can reach out to us on LinkedIn as Dennis Nyanja, N-Y-A-N-J-A -A, or Victoria Ngetich, N-G-T-I-C-H. That is Dennis Nyanja or Victorine Ngetich on LinkedIn. Uh, you can also reach out to us on our socials at Saved by Nobel, those are forwards, Saved by Nobel on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. If you like this episode, please forward it to a friend. And uh, remember to give us a five-star rating and review wherever you got this podcast from. Hope you've been saved by Nobel and we'll see you on the next one.